before we start this video, a large thank you to Lung, Daniel, and Hershey Boy for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hey guys, today we're going to add the option to select different hairstyles on our character creation menu. So let's start off by actually opening up the canvas here and uh, dropping down and going to the middle panel. I'm going to start by creating an empty game object. I'm just going to call it hairstyles. And then I'm going to actually make the transformer the same size as the middle panel by holding Alt and clicking this bottom right symbol down here. Um, and next I'm going to go over to our main menu buttons. I'm going to select them all and make sure I set the highlight color and select the color something like red just so we can see it. I'm not being too particular over how it looks. So I just want to get the, uh, the purpose and the point down to show you what I mean. So now that we've made it red, you can see if I mouse over anything, the buttons turn red, which is a good indicator that they are currently the ones being selected or hovered over. Okay, cool. So next, let's open up our canvas again. I'm going to go to the uh, hair button, and I'm going to add an on-click event. And this just does something when you click it. I'm going to drag in the hairstyles game object. I'm going to say game object, set active bull, and click that to true. That means now when we click this, it will turn this game object, as you can see, to true. So it enables it. So I think it's under this game object will uh, basically pop up on the screen too. And this is how we're going to enable and disable our hairstyle menus. So now that's done, let's re-enable this game object. And let's actually start populating it with something. I'm going to make an empty game object under this. I'm going to call it content. This is going to be where we actually have all the buttons um, for the hairstyles that you can select. I'm going to make this the size of the screen again by hitting Alt and clicking this little button. This, or the size of the panel, rather. And I'm going to make a UI button. And I'm going to delete the text from it. And I'm going to call it hairstyle. I'm then going to make it approximately a square. You can make whatever shape you want. Um, but I'm doing this because the images I'm using for the hairstyle icons are roughly the size of a square. So I'm going to make another image under this button. Um, I'm going to call it hairstyle icon. And this will be just the image displaying um, the hairstyle that you want. I have just a couple I've made here. One is for the first style, which is bald. I'm going to click preserve aspect ratio, hit alt, make it the size of the button. And the other one is the first hairstyle on the Cinti model. This is again the modular hero um, asset on the Unity Asset Store by Cinti. Um, you can use whatever model you want, providing it has selectable hair. That's cool. This just is good at um, illustrating the point. So I'm going to drag in my hairstyle, uh, alternate hairstyle here under the icon. And then I'm going to add a grid component to this content box. That just sorts out all the buttons inside. I'm going to make the child alignment to middle center, and that looks good. Now we have two different buttons uh, showcasing two different hairstyles. So if I actually go to these buttons, I don't do anything currently. They're just buttons that exist. You can click them and nothing really happens. So let's go to our hair button again, and let's add another on-click event, and let's drag in our first hairstyle and make it go to button and select. That means it will select this button here after you've clicked the hair button on the main menu. Let's change the highlighted and selected color of these two buttons to red so we know when they're selected. And now if I start the game here and I actually click the hair button, actually I should disable the game object first, try it again, there we go. Now if I click the hair button here, you'll see it opens up and automatically selects this first hairstyle, which is bald. And if I hit left and right in the keyboard right now, it would actually cycle between them both as you can see here right now. So I'm just using the keyboard right now and that works fine. All right, so again, these buttons don't do anything this current uh, point in time. They're just menus that appear right now. So let's actually make them do stuff. Um, let's make a, an on-click function on both of these. And you'll notice that on a lot of these models that you have or that you make or people make for you or that you buy, um, all the hair will be on the same game object. Okay, so it's apparented under the model. So let's go to the hair uh, styles submenu and add a script. I'm going to call it disable all game objects of parent. Um, I'm doing this because every hairstyle on this model is parented under a singular game object called hairstyles. So before we select any of those, we have to disable every other hairstyle that we have active. For example, if you want to select hairstyle 7, you got to make sure that 1 through 18 are disabled first, and then you turn on 7 afterwards. So let's make a uh, public game object variable, and this will be the parent game object. This is the object that has the parent of all the hairstyles that you want to disable. And then let's make a public void called disable all children of selected game object. And you know what? Actually, I like that name more. So I'm going to rename the script uh, this right here. And I'm actually going to use this, uh, this full name for the script because I feel like that's more informative than what we have up there. So I'm just going to rename this to disable all children of selected game object. That's going to give me an error because I can't share the same name as the function, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to rename the function then by erasing the last bit. And I'll just call the function down here, disable all children. And that's pretty informative, I'm sure, of what we're doing after naming the script that. 
So um, let's make a for loop here. And let's say for each child of the parent game object. So we do that by saying parent game object um, dot transform dot child count. And that means for every single child that's under this game object, let's do something. Let's make a variable, uh, call it child, and make that equal um, the parent game object dot transform dot get child. And then we put brackets here and say I. And then we're going to say dot game object like that. And then we're going to say if child does not equal null, we're going to say child dot set active false. And all this means is we're going to count every single child that's parented under this main game object. And if it exists, we're going to disable it. And this is this is what you need to do before turning on a hairstyle. Otherwise, you'll get hairstyles that turn on at the same time. And now all you do is you find the game object with all of our hairstyles. Um, and mine is called all hair. You can see there they all are. You drag this parent right here like that. And then we need to use that function on an on click event. Now let me show you. So the on click event here, we go down here right here. We drag in hairstyles because that's where we put the script. And then we go to the script, disable all children select the game object and click uh, the function. And now it will do that. So for the first hairstyle, we're done because it's just bald. That's fine. Um, now for the next hairstyle, we do that again. And then we enable the hairstyle we want, the one that matches with the picture. So in my case, that will be hairstyle number one. And this works the same way with any model. It doesn't have to be a Cinti model. You do the same principle. You disable all other hair types, whichever way you want, using code or using a function like that. And then you enable the one that you want to turn on. And now if you go into the game here and click hair, uh, you can see it works. We have to click it first. There we go. It's bald. And now we have hair. So that's awesome. Works as intended. But we actually want it to do that too when we just mouse over it uh, because most games have that. So it's very simple. We actually have to add um, an event trigger on both of these things. And we have to add two types. So we go to event trigger and then we add new event type. We want to go for on select or just select, sorry, and on pointer enter. I believe select is used when the controller selects it with joystick or the, the WASD keys and on pointer enter is when your mouse enters it. So you want both of these ideally for most games, unless you're just using a controller or just using a mouse, in which case you can use either or. Uh, and then we just do the same thing. Um, we just put in our hairstyle for bald. We're just disabling all hairstyles here for me. And then on the other one, we're disabling all hairstyles and then turning on the hairstyle that we want to see. And, and the order of operations here obviously matters. Turn them off first, then enable the one that you want. So for me, that's hairstyle one. So I'm going to do the same. So let's add an event trigger here for again on select and then on pointer enter and just do the exact same thing. And a lot of the UI set up for stuff like this, especially the character creation screen, there's a lot of repetitiveness to uh, doing small things like this because if you have like 40 hairstyles, I, I believe my solo project has approximately 46, um, then you'll notice that you know, you're know you gonna be doing a lot of this kind of thing. Um, but the good news is you can duplicate the buttons afterwards and you can just change that one object, which is just the hairstyle you're enabling, uh, except for the bald because that has one less option. But everything that turns on a hairstyle, you can just, just, just duplicate the button you've already made and then change that one part, which isn't as tedious. Okay, so now that that's done, if we go into the game here now again, uh, press play, and then we go down to hair, and you can see if I use the keyboard here and switch back and forth, I'm not clicking it, but it's actually changing now, bald, and there's the hair, just like so. So that's cool, but we have a problem. We can actually still select the other buttons, as you can see here when I scroll over. We don't wanna do that. We wanna lock ourselves to the hairstyle menu. So that's really easy too. Um, there's a way to turn off the interactivity of buttons. So. Basically, when we go to um, click one of these main menu buttons, uh, we want to, or hair for example, we want to actually disable all of the interactivity of the other buttons. I just ignore this bit. I didn't mean to click that right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the hair button up top and we're going to add a few events here. Um, approximately however many there are buttons. So we have four buttons, so we're gonna have four events. We go to button uh, bull interactable right here and we want to uncheck that. And it really helps to, by default, the the uninteractable color of the button is set to like a gray, like a darker color, so you really know. Um, if yours is set to the same color as your button is default, you don't want that. You want to make sure it's very, um, it's easily indicated that the button is turned off. And I'll show you what I mean right now. It should be fine from the get-go. So let's make sure all that is set up and they are all turned off. And over here now on the on-click function of these hairstyles, we want to re-enable them. You don't need to add this for the, the event trigger, just for the on click, because the click is confirming. Um, we don't want to do it when you mouse over it or you select it, because that's just a preview. 
but when you click the button or press enter or you know you're, you've, you've selected it for sure you want to re-enable all these buttons uh, do this for both of the hairstyles or how many you have and then if you really want to make it um, nicer you actually have to lead back into a button too so for example we got into this menu by clicking hairstyle so you want to leave the menu by reselecting the button hairstyle so you drag in hair and then go to button like right here and then just hit select and there you go and that's it um, and you want to do this and then disable the game object of the parent hairstyle so we can turn that off because you have other menus happening you want to make sure you close the menus as you uh, as you've completed your selection do the same thing here now for the other hairstyle and uh, yeah, it's just the exact same process. So we want to re-enable all of our buttons so we can we can select them again after we're done using the hair menu. And then we want to make it so when we do close the menu, we go back to the last button we clicked, which is the hair button, and we select that one by default. And uh, then we close the hairstyles menu by uh, disabling the game object parent hairstyles. So it's very simple. And these on-click functions here, or events, sorry, they make it really, really easy. Uh, Unity's UI system, in my opinion, very easy to work with. Tedious and takes a while to set up, but very, very easy to work with. So let's go to here. Now we click it, and there we go. If we go back and forth, that works. And you can see the buttons are disabled. I can't actually go back over and select them. So I can't hit uh, left on the keyboard a bunch and go back. And when I click, they're re-enabled again. So that works perfectly as intended. Wonderful. Now, um, there might be a situation in the future where you have, I'll say, many hairstyles where they almost like go down below the screen and you need to scroll on them. But before we do that, go to your event system and you'll see here there's a thing called first selected. Make sure you drag your first button in there. And all that does is when you start the game now, you're going to see that this button is automatically selected. That's imperative for people who use controllers. Um, otherwise, when you start, no button will be selected and you can't actually select one with a controller. You'll have to mouse the first one. So that's a bit of useful information. Now, as I was saying, if you have a lot of these, so like I set it up just like this here now, and you can see it's going below the screen. Um, we need to make a scroll, uh, like a scroll bar for this. So we can do this by creating an empty game object here. And I'm going to call this scroll rect because that's what the name of the um, little component that you add onto this is called. And let's uh, make this the size of the screen again, uh, or panel rather by hitting alt and then hitting this little button. So it's all the same size. And then go down to add component and let's add a scroll rect. And then let's add a mask component. And the mask makes it so if anything is outside of this box, it's not shown on the screen. So you can see here now the hairstyles are going below it and leaving it. And let's add a scroll bar parented under the hairstyles. And let's make it go from top to bottom or bottom to top. It doesn't matter. Let's bring it over here to the right. And then let's uh, make this, you know, roughly the same size as the panel or a little bit smaller if you want to. Maybe it looks a bit better. It looks cool to me. Um, let's go to the scroll rect and drag in this scroll bar and the vertical scroll bar. And then we're going to change this from elastic to unrestricted. Um, and then we can go up here and untick horizontal because it's only vertical. It's only scrolling up and down. And then for the content uh, section up here, if you can see that, we're actually going to just drag in the content that we made earlier. So that'll be this right here. Now let's parent the content first under the scroll rect. Okay, that's important. Let's put that under there. And then drag the scroll rect in the viewport and drag the content in the content bar up top. So um, basically the 2D mask will make it, as you can see here now, you see the hairstyles, how they've, they've, they're not clipping outside anymore. That's because we have this in the viewport and there's a mask on it. So anything outside the viewport isn't displayed. You can see how they kind of stop, whereas before they went off screen. Um, okay, so now we have a problem. If we go in the game, you'll try to move this bar and it actually won't budge. And this is because you need to make sure your content is um, bigger than the actual scroll rect. So let's bring it right down here like this. And the bigger your content is, the more you can scroll down. So now if I go back inside the game again, uh, I'm just going to disable hairstyles and click it. So we go click hair here, and then we have the hairstyle menu working as intended. And now if I actually drag down the scroll rect here, you can see, there we go. It moves up and down and there's a mask stopping it from going off screen. So that looks really good. You can actually size the mask, whatever size you want. You can bring it up more if you don't want to touch on the bottom of the border there. Um, it's all the same. Just play around with it until you find something you like. But that is essentially how to do a hairstyle menu. Very simple, very straightforward. And this will work for things like beard, eyebrows, anything where you're just disabling and enabling other game objects. Um, go to town with this. This is, this is how you do all those little um, additions. It could be accessories, whatever you want. So there you go. You have the formula for it now. Uh, if you want to make the scroll bar move with a mouse, I mean a keyboard or controller rather, you can set up a script and make it so every time you move the keyboard or joystick down to another row, you can manually set 
the value of the scroll bar yourself that way. That's how I do it in my game for actually doing it with a controller. If you're super unsure that I can touch on that very briefly in another video in this mini series, so let me know down below. And if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, uh, drop a like. It does genuinely help out my series so much. Leave a comment. The interaction does help appease the YouTube algorithm gods. And check out my Patreon below if you're feeling like a super champion. So I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.